Okay, now you have uh, Java and Eclipse already installed. So the next step, let's start a Java program. Okay, let's start a Java program. You click on File New and then from there, can you see Java project? Click on that, name a project, let's say my first Java project. Mm -hmm. And then say finish. Okay, now if you click on the left hand side, can you see the SRC folder? Inside the SRC folder, create a new package. Mm -hmm. Name, okay, my first Java package. Uh, okay. Normally, can you see this project name, package name? If you right click on the package name, here, can you see there is a refactor? Yeah, 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 refactor, refactor and rename. Mm -hmm. The package name we always do lower camel case. Lower camel case means, yeah, yeah, like that, yeah. And say okay. And then inside your package, right click and create a new class. Mm -hmm. Name it, let's say, my, and, and again, class name will, will always be upper, like, let's say that you name it my first Java program. Let's name it in that way. Now put that M lowercase. Uh, project project name also lower camel case. Mm -hmm. Now 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 there is a thing here. Can you see the when you name the class name lower camel case, right? Can you see Java class and then there is a warning sign out there. Okay, type name is discouraged by conversation Java type name usually start with an uppercase letter. Class name they always uh, encourage you to start with upper camel case letter. Now, can you see which method stops would you like to create? Can you see public static void main? Yeah, check mark on that and say finish. Okay. Now, can you see here that in the first line you have a package. In the third line you have your class. In the fifth line, can you see you have your main method, public static void main, right? Okay. Now, Java, Java is a object-oriented programming language. Remember that Java is a object-oriented programming language. In brief, we call it OOP object oriented programming language what does it mean uh, it means everything you do in java you do it by object you can you see the first thing that you have created a class right a class and from the class you will be able to create an object and by the object you keep doing your work we will learn more but to start with, can you see in the first line there is a package, right? Package means, uh, you know, area, okay? Kind of under like, you can have multiple classes. You can have many classes under the same package. 
when you put classes under the same package that means like same process area you got it like it is just grouping of the classes package uh, in in a, in a real life java program there will be many classes right to organize the classes uh, to their corresponding type we create package and under package we put the classes now classes under same package will have you will understand later that there is access capability they will have like the different uh, depending on what package type your classes are they will have different access um, you know privilege we will be discussing those later for now uh, just uh, understand this package as grouping of the class right you want to organize your class in a good way meaningful way so that if a program is big then you know okay by the package name okay i put all of the login related classes under login package i put all of the registration related classes under registration package i put all of the uh, you know flight related classes under flight package you got it like what package means okay then class <clears throat> we will have in details discussion what is java class and what is object but before that every java program will have a class as you can see in line number three we have a public class this public has a very great meaning why we are using public we will be discussing all of this public private protected all of these things are there we will be discussing in details these are important and then your class name inside the class inside the class can you see your class started in line number three uh, can you see the starting curly bracket in line number so that is where your class started and where is the ending point of your class here yeah, if you put cursor after the first starting curly bracket after the first starting curly bracket in line number three now can you see it is pointing out what is the matching pair for that particular curly bracket in line number 10 can you see the up in line number 10 can you see okay now put your cursor in line number five after the curly bracket now can you see how it is pointing what is its endpoint okay now your java class started in line number three and the java class ended in line number 10 and inside whatever you have in between these two curly bracket in line number three you have a starting curly bracket in line number 10 you have a ending curly bracket whatever you have in between in between these two curly bracket these are the body of this my first java program class does it make sense this is uh this is where the class starts this mm -hmm. is where the class ends mm -hmm. is Body, body body of the class body of the class now inside the body inside the body right can you see in line number five so that means like whatever you have in line number four to nine whatever you have in line number four to nine is the body of the class inside the body there is something called public static void main can you see public static void main all of these things have meaning what is why that is public why that is static why there is a void right everything has a meaning and then main right and then string arc tracks everything have meaning now so if you see that main and then there is a can you see there is a, um, a parenthesis inside the parenthesis string and then box bracket arcs there is something right if you see there is a name and after the name there is a parenthesis parenthesis means in bengali we call it first bracket so if you see there is a uh, there is a name and then there is a first bracket that means this is a method this is a method this is a method what method does method works method works okay now yeah method works for you 
by method you will be able to let's say if you have a uh, subordinate employee under you you can get different things done by him is that correct similarly in java class if you have method you can get things done by method okay how we will learn how now how do you identify method a method will have a method will have can you see at least void main can you see at least void the word void this is called return type. This method void means it doesn't have any return type. Okay. We will understand what is return type, but it will have either void or int or double. It will have something. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see it. We'll see it now. Yeah, we'll see it now. Now, that method that you have in line number five, what is the starting point of that method? The curly bracket. And then, can you see your method is ending in line number eight? Okay. Now, can you see in line number six? Double forward slash and to do auto generated method stuff. So that is where it is a comment. Whenever you see it starts with double forward slash, it is a comment. What does comment means? Comment means what does comment means? Comment means this is just for information purpose, it will not be executed. Comment means in, in like let's say that when you label things in your household, right? Let's say you put a sticker, you have so many things, you put a sticker, okay. This is for what, this is for what. This is just label for information purpose, right? Do not eat the label. Is that correct? Okay. Similarly, here double forward slash, whatever you see, starting with double forward slash, these are information purpose. Okay, it is comment. In, in programming language, we call it comment, commenting, okay? Now, so after line number six, press enter. So here, type system S uppercase. S uppercase, mm -hmm. system dot mm -hmm. out dot print ln mm -hmm. yeah ln print ln all lowercase okay system actually remove print ln remove up to print ln remove the dot put a dot now type print Okay, now can you see there is print and L put a L, L, just a L. Okay, can you see print LN in the first double click on it? Okay, inside the, inside the, yeah, double, put double quotation. <clears throat> double quotation. Okay, type here, this is my first. This is my first Java code. Java code, okay. Now, can you see under project menu, there is a play button. Say okay. What do you see? This is my first Java code, right? Okay, very good, very good, okay. Now, now, so can you see that whatever you have inside method, it printed it, is that correct? So now, um, print means uh, display? Or? Display, display, yeah. Now this is, 
can you say system out print ln this is a specific print ln that is let's say for monitor by java program you can write program to print it in led to print it in printer you have different way different command Mm -hmm. You have to write code for that. Okay, now let's say that so uh, inside that main method, you have a line system out print line and it was able to print something for you, right? Now copy that line uh, seven, ten times. <laughs> copy and paste it ten times. Okay. Now execute it. So what do you see? That uh, my version of the code was printed ten times. Okay, ten times. It was able to print it ten times, right? Okay, so um, now if you have to print it, let's say 100,000 times. Uh, there's a code for that too. Or just okay, that? now you, you just keep it one time. Just print command, keep it one time. And then what do you do? After line number six, press enter. Okay. okay. Uh, put declare a variable int integer int space right semicolon. Every line, can you see every line when you put a semicolon? This is a Java statement. When you put semicolon, this is the end of the line press enter put for for and then put um, parenthesis for i equal to inside the parenthesis i equal to one semicolon i less than or equal to or equal to 1000 or or means less than equal together yes. mm -hmm. yeah less than uh -huh. equal to 1000 semicolon i equal to i plus one i plus one and then after that i, I equals to i plus one mm -hmm. and after that put a, a curly bracket yeah, after the parenthesis, after the parenthesis, after the closing parenthesis. After closing parenthesis, mm -hmm. yeah. Put a curly bracket, starting of the curly bracket. Curly bracket means second bracket. Second bracket. Not the box like, bracket. Um, so. This is the beginning, yeah. This one and then can you see uh, after the line number nine press it. after line number nine put after line number nine and uh, press enter put the ending curly bracket and then in yeah and in line number nine can you see system out print ln press it press a tab key out there in line number nine, yeah, Start press a tab, tab. Okay, now you execute. Okay, how long? How long did it took to print one thousand times? Probably a few. Something seems very 
complicated for something that's as simple as printing something. Hmm? Right, or, I see, like, uh, this, this, this seems complicated for something where you're printing, you know, for something as simple as this, it seemed, it seems just kind of complicated. But, I mean, again, this is for me, it's for brand new. Okay, so, uh, yeah. So we this is called looping. We will learn loop a lot. We will take a lot of classes to understand loop. But one thing you have noticed by this loop that we have ran in line number 8 to 10, we accomplish a lot of printing in a matter of, can you see, 3 milliseconds. Can you see uh, uh, the program started execution at 1... Um, November 8, 1.35.09 p.m. It is kind of, I think, um, British time. And then, I mean, the Greenwich time. And then it has ended 1.35.12. It took uh, 0, 0.3 millis, uh, kind of 3 milliseconds, right? So, but it was able to accomplish 1,000 line of printing. Right? So, that is where this program is using your memory to process faster. And that is what, can you see all of this uh, symbolic coding? That is what computer programmer does. That is what, if you work as an automation engineer, that is what you will be doing. Now, now, now here, can you see in line number seven, we have a variable integer i variable integer i now what is the purpose of declaring that i the purpose of declaring that i is i is a container I is a container, container. Mm -hmm. okay. let's say if you want to drink milk you will be using a cup if you want to drink coffee you will be using a cup if you want to eat if you want to take your dinner rice or pilau or biryani you'll be using a container to eat, right? You'll put it in a container. So let's say that people who drinks alcohol, they use a container to, to put it, pour it there and then drink. Is that correct? Yes. Let's say you need to store uh, acid, right? Then you'll be using a specific type of container. If you want to store metal, you'll be using a specific type of container. Is that correct? So, INTI is a container. Now, there are different type of containers. One of the type is integer. Integer means it is a full number, full numeric value. There are number, there are decimal number, like you saw when you, we were doing um, SQL, right? You saw that you can store 100 or you can store 100.25, right? So for full number, for integral number, you use integer type container. And then if you have to use a number with fractional point, right? With fraction, then you use a different type of container. We, let's say double. Double is, is a container that is fractional that can store fractional number there are other data types that we can use for uh, you know fractional number but for now integer we use integer container for full number we use double for fractional number now integer and double is the data type integer and double is the get type i is the variable variable means you can store anything in that i as long as it is a integer type. You got it? As long as it is a full number. Now, before you, like, can you see line number 8, you are putting i equal to 1. So, before you put i equal to 1, you must have to declare it. Can you see in line number 7, we are declaring that i and ti. i. We are saying, okay, it is my, our intention uh, to use that i for full numbers you got it that is what we are doing in line number seven you got it okay then 
in line number eight, right? In line number eight, can you see? You have i equal to one. So the first thing when it it will reach line number eight. Uzair, can you go to your room, daddy? Uh, so here in line number eight, we have i equal to one. The first thing that it will do when it will reach line number eight, it will put i equal to one. It will store one in i. You got it? And then it will compare i less than or equal to thousand. Is it true? I less than or equal to thousand? True, because what do you have in I at this point? One. One less than or equal to thousand. It is true or false? True. If it is true, then it is going to go to line number nine and it will be printing it. You got it? And then do you have anything else inside for in the, in the body of four? Of, of four, you said? In the body of the for loop? Four. Uh, line, number, line number eight. Line number eight. Oh, uh -huh. four. I'm uh -huh. sorry, man. Uh, we have uh, i equals i plus one. No, that is later. First thing to do, i equal to one. It put i equal to one. And then it will compare is i less than or equal to thousand. Here it is. It will compare if the condition is true. If the condition is true, it will go into the body of the for loop. What is the body of the for loop? The body of the for loop starts after line number eight and it ends at line number ten. Does it make sense? Okay. So inside the body of the for loop, you have a print statement, system out print ln. This is the first Java code, right? So first of all, it will put i equal to one and then it will compare if i less than or equal to thousand. If the condition is true, it will go into the body of the loop and then it will print that message, okay? And then it will, it will execute that part i equal to i plus one. When you execute i equal to i plus one, what is the initial value of i? The value of i is one. One. So that means i equal to one plus one. Does it make sense? So that means i is becoming two. After that means an incrementation is happening here. You got it? And then it will go and compare two less than or equal to thousand. Two plus one. No, no, hold on. Two less than or equal to thousand. Is it true or true? Then it will print again system out print again. It will print again, again. This is my first code. And then it will go again i equal to i plus one. Now what will be the value of i? Uh, two, two plus one. one. Three. Three less than or equal to thousand. Condition true or false? True. Then what will happen? It will print again, right? And then after printing, it will increment it again. I equal to i plus one, i equal to three plus one. That means i equal to four. Four less than or equal to thousand. Then what will happen? System out print ln. Mm -hmm. Again, again, right? And then it will increment i again, right? So that is how it will keep doing, keep doing, keep doing. Finally, finally it will reach Let's say i equal to 1000 and then it will compare 1000 less than or equal to 1000. Condition true or false? True. It will print again and then it will increment one more time i equal to 1000 plus 1. Then it will be 1001. 1001 less than or equal to 1000. Condition true or false? False. Then it will no longer execute. Okay, now let's do one thing. Can you see this is my first Java code? After the double quotation, okay, put ampersand. Person? Okay, no, no, put plus. I, put I. Mm -hmm. Now execute it one more time. Mm -hmm. 
one, jump for two. What it did was it ran this code here, where, uh, and then it just it displayed the value of, of the I at the uh, end of uh, each. At the end of, like, can you see with that the message that you are printing? With that message, we are just adding that I. Every time the flow of I is changing, right? So what do you do? Can you see? This is my first Java code. Instead of that, instead of that, this is my first Java code. You put, we are changing the value. No, uh, just just whatever you have inside the quotation. Value. We are changing the value of I. We are changing the value of I and put a colon and space. Colon, not semicolon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you now you execute it one more time. What do you understand? Can you see inside the double quotation you have mentioned i? It has printed i as it is, but after plus when you put i, for that i it has put the value of i, the changing value of i. Does it make sense? It may, was, what exactly is it? For, so like this i doesn't mean this i. If you put right? it inside the double quotation, that is a string. It will not replace the value but but when, after plus it is a variable when you put inside the double quotation it, it is becoming constant okay but after you put plus when you put plus i then it has become a variable okay oh this so remember so remember here plus means can you see we are changing the value of i this is like double quotation and this is a string. If something is inside the double quotation, it is a string. Okay, remember this. And when it you is, put uh, when you put plus i, that means you are adding a string plus an integer. So when you this is this is called this is not plus or minus operation. Instead, this is concatenation operator. This is concatenation operation. Concatenation operation means when you add to string, string means whatever you have in the double quotation is it is a string. When you add two strings or when you add uh, an integer with a string, then you have to use concatenation operator. Concatenation. Uh huh. Concatenation. It, it is not like traditional addition or subtraction. It is adding. Can you see it is different kind of adding? It is adding a string and a together mm -hmm. okay now now let's say that instead of thousand you put five can you see uh, okay okay here before you do that can you see i equal to one this is what we call loop initialization i equal to one and that initialization it executes only once in the beginning Initialization happens only once. And then in the middle where you have i less than or equal to 1000, that is what we are calling loop control. Loop control, where we are checking condition. And if the condition is true, the loop will be executed. If the condition is false, the loop will not be executed. So we call it condition. Okay. So this is uh, for so the for command is mm -hmm. a no, the, the for inside for, can you see that parenthesis? There are three things. One is i equal to one. Right? That is what we are calling initialization. And then in the middle, i less than or equal to thousand, that is where we are checking condition. And then we have i equal to i plus one. That is what we are calling increment or decrement. In this case, we are doing increment. Now, instead of thousand, put five.
and then put a breakpoint in line number 8. Put a breakpoint, breakpoint in line number 8. Break, break, break point means. Uh, can you see the word that can you see the number eight on the left hand side? Click once on the left -hand side of it. No, 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 no. Just put your cursor a little bit left of the eight and then go a little bit left. Uh, click here, click here. That is what we are calling yeah. breakpoint. Now, after putting the breakpoint, can you see the debug menu after uh, be, uh, below uh, search menu? Can you see the bug? Yeah, click on that. Click on that. So this is called debugging. To understand code, you debug. Okay. Switch. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait that. Can you see now it is waiting in line number eight? It hasn't print anything. It is waiting here in line number eight. It is highlighting line number eight. Can you see that? Okay. Now can you see under run menu there are two yellow arrow? One is a step into, another one is a step over. Right? Put click on step over. On the right hand side, can you see i equal to 1? Right hand side? Of the screen? Yes. i equal to 1. Now can you see now you are in line number 9? Okay, if you click on a step over again, can you see it has printed i equal to 1? And what did I say? What will happen after this print? After this print, it's going to uh, it's gonna go back to this one. It, it, it is going to in increment i, right? Uh, yeah. What is the initial value of i? Uh, is one. One, it will do i equal to i plus one. Two, right? And then it will compare two less than or equal to five. Is it true? Okay. Now, can you see when you did step into now, what is the value of i? Value of i uh, is now 2. Uh, it's 2. And then C condition is 2, and that's why you are inside the body of the for loop. It will be printing one more time. Yeah, print it. And then now, now what will happen? Do it again. It will increment it again. And what will be? 3, and can you see? It has checked. 3 less than or equal to 5, condition 2, it has printed it, yeah, print it. And do it one more time, yeah, print it, yeah. And then now what, what will happen? Uh, increment again. Mm -hmm. To 4. And it will be printing, mm -hmm. do it. Okay. Now, what will happen? 5. five. And 5 then or equal to 5 and then it is printing now wait there okay uh, now can you see when i equal to 6 it has checked 6 less than or equal to 5 condition false and it came out came out of the loop you do you understand how it is can you see Yeah, ex execute one more time. I want to show you the last part. Execute means debug one more time. Yeah. Each time you click, you see the below of I. It is very important you understand this. When it is 5, wait there. Okay, now wait there. 5, now it is going to print it, right? Print it. Step over. Hey, step over one time. Click one time. Now it is here. I equal to 5. 
Now what it will do? Increment again. It or? is going to increment yeah. i equal to i plus one, right? Yeah. It will be putting i, I equal to i plus one. Uh, so what will happen? You tell me. It's gonna ch 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 check to see if uh, uh, five is less than or no, first of all, it will increment. First of all, it will increment. Oh, sorry. So you'll see if like six is less than or five. Mm -hmm. If it is, then it will print. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, 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 hold on. Can you see in the left hand side there is a step into? There is a step over? No, uh, yeah, step into, click on that. Now, what do you uh, actually it will do? Both of these will do same. Now, i equal to 6 and it has checked if 6 less than or equal to 5, it found that condition is false and then it came. Was it able to print it one more time? No, because the condition got false. Do you understand? Okay. Uh, does it make sense? Like, yes. Uh, it, I'm very nervous about more complex problems. No, this for loop, this for loop, normally I explain to people after a month of classes, probably 15, after three, four classes, I go for for loop. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I, I feel so special then. No, it's like I, I'm just, I know that in the beginning, it, if I explain it, you'll be okay. So that's why. Now let's say that you have uh, printed one, two, three, four, five, right? If I ask you what about printing one, three, five, seven, something like this. Put again the range 1000 instead of, actually put the range as 100 instead of 5. Your execution is not done yet. Finish the execution. Okay. And then instead of I put 5. Now, if I ask you, hey, Jaman, can you print one? Three, five, seven, nine, eleven. How will you do that? Uh, yeah, print one, three, seven, seven. Um, three, three, let's see. So, so it would be random. No, no. One, three, uh, uh, five. five. Odd numbers, yeah. Odd numbers, uh, I would do it plus two. Do it. Uh, mm -hmm. Print it. Do not debug it, just uh, print it. Right? One, three, five, seven, nine. Now, if I ask you, Jaman, can you print two, four, six, eight, like this? Plus three, like a odd number. Now I want even numbers only. Two, six, eight, like this. Um, like a uh, plus or I'm do it plus. Uh, so, are you going to print one at this time? No. So, will you start from one? What will you? Oh, okay. So, I. There we go. Uh, so, we're just going to do it like this. Mm -hmm. Like that right here. Two plus two. Yeah, print it. Yeah. Does it make sense? Okay, now after line number six, number six, press enter. And then put double uh, double forward slash. And Sam, uh, write the question, print, print space, print the series, four, No, no, no. Four, comma, uh, nine, 
and then dot 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 and then put 100 or let's say let's put 1000 okay now how will you do that Mm -hmm. five, so I equals five. What is your starting point? So I equals four. Mm -hmm. And R equals to a thousand. I'm going to do I plus five. Mm -hmm. Until 1000. It doesn't go till 1000 exists, not, uh, isn't, uh, it's not true for this. So let's put, instead of to understand it clearly, put up to 30. Uh, let's say, no, 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 in the for loop, put instead of 1000, put 30. 30. And then you have a breakpoint, debug it. Breakpoint? You already have a breakpoint in line number nine, so debug it. What does this uh, mean exactly? Uh, a breakpoint? Breakpoint means like, you can you see, you can execute the whole program at once, or you can debug, you can go step by step. Well, I mean, it, it, debug means like, uh, let's say if you want to, there. you do not understand the program or something is wrong, you do not know where the problem is. Remember, programming is kind of mathematics, right? Okay. Then you do debug. You go step by step to understand where the problem is. Uh, step into that, like, uh, that means that it's going to, they're essentially the same, but this one is... So, uh, uh, let me tell you this. So step into means, let's say that this Java program that you are executing, many thing is already comes with Java. Those things, if there is any inside step, step into will take you to those built-in code. Step over means if there is anything inside, do not go it, just execute this particular line. Uh, we will understand as step into mode, but for now step over, so what is the value of i at the moment? i at the moment is 4. And it has printed 4. The value of i will now be 9. 9. Mm -hmm. Now print 9. And then i will be 14. Mm -hmm. 14. 14. Be, uh, 19. Mm -hmm. Four, sorry. 24, mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, and then it'll be 28. No, 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 no. Oh, it's gonna be 29. 29, 29. Yeah. Yep. And then that's, and then it's gonna. Now what? 34. 34. 34 less than equal to 30. Condition true or false? That's false. That's why it is not printing anything after 29. Yeah. Does it make sense? It does, yeah. Okay, now line number seven. After line number seven, press enter. Uh, finish the execution of it. Okay, now what you do, let's say I'm giving you a series um, 13, 13, yeah, this is the series 13, comma 21, comma 29. Dot, 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 100. Okay. Uh, so it's like, 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 it's
is just initial discussion how this uh, uh, this loops work okay um so you understand like here when you start execution your execution starts from the main program can you see the main method the your execution starts from the main method that means the main method is the entrance point of your execution does it make sense you said the main method is the uh -huh, starting point. point so it's like it starts from here mm -hmm. the, the code execution starts from the main method okay. your code execution starts from the main method okay Let's say that let's do this. Um, let's uh, not worry about this looping at this point. Understand few important concept. Remember, I said Java is an object oriented language. What kind of language Java is? It's, an object, -oriented it's a object oriented language. Object oriented language means everything you will have to do by object and class. Okay, now what is class? What is object? Right? What is class? What is object? Now remember, uh, focus on this. Let's say that when in this country, when they build a subdivision, right? Yeah. In, in if you go inside the subdivision, you will see that there are three, four types of house. I mean, three, four different design of the house, right? Yeah. Most of the houses will be built according to this three or four design. Is that correct? You will see some of the house, three bedroom, two bath, and then you will see some of the house, four bedroom, three bath, and some of the house, five bedroom, four bath, right? Yeah. You might see most of the five bedroom house have similar design, and four bedroom houses have similar design. Probably color, you know, different things are a little bit different in terms of color, in terms of, but in terms of architecture construction all of the three bedroom houses are similar okay now what they do the civil engineer initially they create the design right they create the design of three bedroom houses they create the design for four bedroom houses they create the design for five bedroom houses is that correct so and then according to the design they build all of the houses is that correct so for these houses, what is the template? You have the template for mm -hmm. the template yeah. that let's say for all of the three bedroom houses, the template is the master design. Is that correct? They have the design initially and from the design they build each and every house. Is that correct? There's a different design for uh different design for um each house depending on the number of rooms and bathrooms are right yeah so if it is three bedroom house all of the houses will have similar structure is that correct yeah. if it is a four bedroom houses right the subdivision where i live all of the four bedroom two and a half bath houses have similar design outside might be different color interior might be different color right other than that uh, some of the houses might have fans those might be expensive right other than that it looks same in terms of design so they first create the template of the house and then using of the template they create different object of the house object means template means it is in the concept okay when you are talking about the uh, house design of the house it is in the pen and paper it is in it is a concept does it make sense and then when uh, the you know this uh, machinery guy or uh, this uh, construction guys when they build it it is the actual object it, it becomes an object does it make sense okay now that is what we are going to understand so classes are the template or or the blueprint of the object classes are the design okay and the object right when you have to like can you use the house if it is in 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 design no it is a design right you can only use the house once it is an object once it is a it is built is that correct 
so classes are the template are the blueprint of the object and object object is when you create an object of a class then only you can use that class does it make sense now remove everything inside your main method mm -hmm. remove everything remember everything means everything means what uh, all these right here like remove it remove it okay now so what you do can you see in the left hand side you do not have the uh, can you see there is a project explorer in the left yep. click on the project explorer okay explore your project source uh -huh. Ex uh -huh. now right uh, expand your uh, package right click on package now right click on the package and create new new and create a new class name this class as let's say my second class now over there it will be under same package name can you see the name no 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 no. you are changing the name of the package um, my second class mm -hmm. okay no no we do not remember inside your whole program there will be only one main method from where your execution will be started so you already have a main method in another class right so we are not going to create another main method finish and, and so this uh, the me methods are uh, what exactly is the we will do we will do can, can you see uh, that uh, okay actually can you see that uh, my second class right actually we are going to rename it right click refactor now refactor here uh, name it as let's say um, name it uh, my animal my animal my animal Animal, animal, animal. So here, um, let's say that um, what we are going to do inside your animal method, create a uh, inside your animal class, create a no inside inside there, animal uh, go there and create a method. No, 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 no. Just uh, in line, press enter. Mm -hmm. Press enter. Let's say that. Um, let's say. Create a method here. Let's say void. Void space. Food. Food and then put parenthesis. I mean. Yeah, and then put, uh, yeah, put uh, starting curly bracket. After that, after that. After that, which? Mm -hmm. Now the, the line number four. After parentheses, press enter. Uh -huh, press enter. Okay, put a system out print in here. Out, dot uh -huh. out. System will be uppercase. Double click, double click. Mm -hmm. System out print LN. Okay, so here system out print ln. Let's say um, what we are going to do. Okay, 
again. Okay, so let's do this in this way. I put a message here. Um, Uh, inside 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 line number five put double quotation mm -hmm. now inside the parenthesis put double quotation double quotation okay i an email it's it's means uh my email um so my email it's let's say food it's food it's e a t s it's food now here uh i'm going to keep it as it is then we'll customize it so you have a now can you see you have a class my animal and then Inside the class, you have a method food, right? And you have a message there my email, it's food. Okay, now you go to your main method, uh, you go to your first program, Java. Now, that the other class that you have created, so here, if you execute at this point. Is it printing anything? No. Okay. Now, because you have created the object, you have created the design, but you haven't implemented it. Does it make sense? Okay. You have created the design, but you haven't implemented it. So, what will happen uh, here? You tell me now what will happen, what you have to do. Tab here or, or link these two so you have to like you have to implement uh, you have created the class you have created the template but you haven't created any object so what you have to do here can you what is the name of that class my animal is that create an object of that class remember that creating the class is not everything you have to you have to create the object of the class okay now the object of the class is start with the system so it's the class right here this would be the object here Okay, now, okay, now you go to your main method. Uh, can you see my animal? How do you create object? You have to create an object, okay? Let's say my animal, put that class name. And uh, remember, aligning your code is important, okay? Put that my animal. And then you go there, yeah, put one tab. Always it is one tab. Mm -hmm. Create put my animal. No, it is one word. My animal and then put a space. And then let's say animal object. Animal obj. Obj, it will be lower camel case. Obj will be uppercase. O will be uppercase. Okay. Only O will be our case, PJ. Okay, now uh, my animal and then animal object equal to equal to new. New again put that my animal space, new space.
then put uh, curly bracket, uh, sorry, parenthesis, starting parenthesis and closing parenthesis. Okay, put semicolon at the end. Okay, now you have created the object. Now what you, can you see, can you copy the object name animal obj? Press enter after line number six and put that animal obj dot. Now, can you see food? Double click. Now you execute. What do you see? Mm -hmm. Design was taken from this. Uh, from this from, one, right? From this class here. No. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So and the food. So the void. The food is the name of the. Uh, right here. Mm -hmm. Food is the name of the body. Food is the uh, name of the method. Of the method. Okay. Mm -hmm. Food is the name of the method. Mm -hmm. uh, which is. The string here. Which is printing something. Method means it will do something. It will do is, let's say, uh, what it will print something in the output. And then, so uh, in order to use the class and its object, you have to, can you see in your main method, right? You have to create an object of that. You have to create an object of that class and then you have to, by that object, you can call all of the methods that you have inside that class. Right, now what is the purpose of object, if I ask you? Object, like you need uh, the object to perform the task. Or you need, you need object. object, you need object, like method will be doing stuff for you okay in order to call the method you have to create the object are we clear okay so that is how object oriented programming means there will be a lot of discussion in terms of object different uh, you know different uh, object type different variables this is kind of a intro, intro discussion of mm -hmm. okay, so this, this is a, so one more time, uh, um, you need for a method to be performed. You, you, you need, need a method to, to perform object. something. You need to method to perform something. But, but that for it to perform it, it, it has to have an object. Similar to you need a design to build a house. Mm -hmm. To live in the house, you need to actually make the house. You need to actually build the house. Yeah, you need to actually. Okay, so that makes sense. Okay. So what I will I will send a couple of a couple of video regarding that that you are going to brainstorm a little bit i will be discussing a lot a lot about this because this is just tip of the ice okay yeah. tip of the iceberg in object oriented programming is the ocean okay i think it's because i'm sleepy and tired but uh, it feels uh, a lot more ch ch challenging well I mean, it's not challenging but uh, it looks like this is going to require a lot more practice it's, it's, it, it, it is very easy, Jaman. We will discuss more. You will see that how easy this concept is. Okay, so you will see that it is pretty easy and will be pretty comfortable in uh, doing this. Now, yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, uh, let's come back. I will uh, let me stop this man. It's, there is a balloon. And the fan is running and it is hitting the balloon, man.
Anyway, so uh, let me stop this recording for this purpose.